Hello and welcome to another video of Silky Peaks Developer Studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how to work with white balance in the software. It's true that I actually made a, a video uh, about white balance already, but I thought that wasn't good enough because I haven't used a proper example like this one here. So I thought that I should make another video to clarify uh, some of the things that I already have mentioned earlier. I will elaborate a bit more uh, with a proper example and a proper white balance card. So let's get into it. Anyway, we all know white balance uh, was that generally uh, white balance is the Kelvin. So more you go less, it gets cooler and more you go up, um, it gets warmer. Um, technically, if you want a perfect photo with a good and proper skin tone, um, blue is blue and green is green obviously uh, it's really important to nail your white balance other than that it's completely a uh, artistic choice so you can have your photo warm as it is maybe it's not a true color but if that's what you want uh, that's okay as well mm, nothing wrong with that and um, in this particular software uh, you have two tools available one uh, the gray balance tool one here and one over here and second one is the skin color tool so first one we all know if you have a white color 18% gray you can pick up the tool you click and you're good to go um, it should give you a pretty decent um, uh, accurate white balance reading let's get back However, if you have, if you're doing portrait and it's important for you to nail your skin tone and skin color, then you have another tool called skin color tool, which what it does, you can pick up the same thing, drop it on the skin. It essentially should protect your skin tone while giving you a proper white balance readout. Now, there is a few problem that I would like to mention. For instance, in the first tool, it does look a little bit orange, a red orange ish. Particularly, I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, I prefer a bit more neutral. I believe the color on this side has a bigger influence on my subject and it's very uh, dominating and has a green color cast, which is more visible using with this still. For instance, if you do the same thing over here, as you can tell, it's it, the skin gets better, much more cooler. However, I find it does have a very strong green color cast. If you look at the histogram here, uh, it's quite visible. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do what I always do. I fix my color, uh, neutral, standard color, or memory color that's up to you um, memory color is quite good for landscape but for portrait it does work um, and then step number two is always the white balance now I'm going to pick up my skin tone and drop it there now I do have another problem here which is my exposure is clipping as you can tell the exposure is really blown out so that would be my step number three. So I have my color that I want. There's a little bit of fixing needs to be done. But before I go any further, my step three will be exposure. So let's go to fix my exposure a little bit. And let's have a look at our warning. I'm pretty sure that my shadows are good. I'm more worried about my highlights. So I don't want my highlights to be blown out. As you can tell in this part and a little bit here, there is a touch um, a clipping it's not really clipping it's just a warning that you are really in the danger zone you should I shouldn't go more than that however my highlights are way off in this side but I wouldn't care because my important is in this side of the photographs not in that side of the photograph so let's get back now my job is to fix my green here so what I do I go to the white balance adjustment. I bring it, pull it over here a little bit right under my histogram. What I'll do, I'll pull the green down. So that's green. 
so I should go opposite direction so go down a little bit on the so I do have two problem one I have green and one is red so I should go opposite of green so opposite of this green zone it's right here opposite of red is also there so I think that this zone should be my neutral zone so I should pull go there a little bit see what it does for me as you can tell I'm quite happy with how it looks everything looks my histogram looks brilliant it's no clipping there it's almost no clipping there this part particularly I believe is that section other than that, I'm really happy with that. The, uh, let me show you another way to check your color if they're accurate or no. So you bring up your fine color controller. That's yellow. As you can tell, if you put your cursor on the actually yellow, it's right there. Next to the white dot. It's not perfect, but it's close enough. Let me show you another example. So that's, that's one of the blue. Not far from the actual dot. It's in the good zone, I would say. Let's check the same thing with green, not far from the uh, white dot, not perfect, but close enough. You can, you can do a little bit of more fine tuning obviously, and then you can get um, close to the uh, neutral zone and get accurate color. My point is that you sh if you want to have perfect color, you really have to be careful with your white balance, make sure it's, you have a white balance card. And you also have to make sure that you, if you have a little bit of color cast, you can use the white balance adjustment to get rid of any kind of green or blue or any other color cast. And then do, a fi do your fine tuning and you should be able to get accurate color, accurate white balance. Uh, before I finish this video, I'd like to mention one thing though. Yes, it's true that you can use the white balance adjustment to get rid of any kind of color cast. You also can actually use the same tool to add color cuts to give a little bit of um, film look. Um, let me show you what I mean by that. So let's say I want a little bit of retro uh, 70s um, cowboy look. So generally on this video you have a lot of um, yellow and a lot of uh, green. I would say, or red I say. and red as well. I cannot do all of them at the same time. I have to pick between red or yellow or yellow and green so let's go for that oh too far but anyway let's go for that now that's my step one but i also want a little bit of red let's pull it back a little bit don't want to go too crazy let's pull it back a little bit now i'm there we are good and then in the color deflection or tint i can add a touch of red I can add, warm it up a little bit and if I go to the contrast, I can pull the contrast down a little um, and then I, that's already good enough to give you a bit of a warm Kodak um, film look um, or 1970s uh, film look. I can obviously fine tune a little bit totally up to you but this is already a quite artistic enough for me and I'm quite happy with that so what I mean you can use the same tool to get accurate color or an artistic color totally up to you and this is brilliant very easy to use and I use that quite a lot to get my uh, film look artistic look for Instagram or for Facebook uh, things stuff like that and you can do exactly the same I hope that was helpful and I see you in the next video.